。昨天 AMD 在北京举办了 AIPC 的创新峰会，那为此 AMD 的 CEO Lisa 苏，也就是咱们熟悉的苏妈，也是来到了现场啊。那苏妈是好不容易来了一趟国内，咱们可不能轻易的放过她，是吧？于是啊，我们就准备了一次采访，和苏妈简单交流了一番。Nice to see you, Lisa. I'm Fei from Jikowan, and welcome to China. I'm wondering if you can just say hi to our Chinese audience behind the camera here. Hello, 大家好 Wow. Very nice to see you. You know, you actually got a huge fan base here in China. They even came up this nickname called Su Ma, which means Mom Su. I I don't know if you heard that before. I have heard that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it sounds like a kind lady raising AMD to its mature state or something. <laughs> Thank you. And personally, I'm a big fan of you and AMD. And as you can see, I actually wear the T-shirt with Ryzen on it. All right. Thank you. It looks great. <laughs> yeah. It's actually designed by our team in house. And you know, just to show our love to those great products like Ryzen. That's excellent. Thank you.、Yeah. Looks wonderful. Yeah, glad you like it. I can get you some if you will. Yeah, I'll take one. Sure. <laughs> All right. Anyway, today let's just have a little chat about AI and、uh, AMD and other stuffs. Okay. So let's start with an easy one. You know, I feel like we've been talking about the possibility of AI for you know all day long, and it makes me imagine like, wow, if that kind of thing is possible, what could be possible for the future, right? So, in your vision, what kind of new application could we expect in the future, and maybe what role will AMD play to make that happen? Yeah, well, I agree with you. I think AI has been around for a long time. But really, in the last, you know, let's call it twelve to eighteen months, I think AI has progressed much, much faster than anybody's expectation, and it's because it's so easy to use.、Uh, everyone can use AI right now with, you know, ChatGPT or other、um, uh, similar type,、uh, you know, functions. So, you know, what I view is a world where、um, everyone, everybody's life is、uh, improved by AI. We can all become more productive. We can all become smarter.、Uh, we can all have access to,、uh, you know, better technology. And you know, this is really enabled by、uh, the computing horsepower. So I love that we're in the middle of this AI revolution, and you know, we spend、um, all of our time and energy thinking about how can we build. Uh, the next great AI product. So it's all about accessibility, right? It、yeah. is. It is also. I think it's、um, the idea is we want technology to be easier to use.、Yeah. In the past, although AI was there,、uh, most people didn't know how to use AI, and now、um, everyone can access、uh, AI. Actually, it's to make their lives easier. Easier, yes,、yeah, definitely. Okay, so the next question is about competition and the, maybe the positioning of AMD. So we see huge competition in today's AI market. Obviously, Nvidia is a huge competitor, and they also got this well-established ecosystem. They got Kudas, and a lot of people would just assume maybe they have the upper hand. But I remember you saying that in the AI market, just because things are going so fast, changing so fast, we don't really have this thing called moat. But if you don't have moat, what can you use as a weapon in the competition? What do you think is the unique strength of AMD compared to other players? Well, the best thing about、um, a new market is、uh, it is growing so fast and it is changing so fast. So I view, you know, over the next ten years, actually, we're going to see、um, significant changes.、Uh, not every year, like every month. We'll see、uh, significant changes, and when you think about, you know, you know, from AMD standpoint, you know, why am I so excited about our AI opportunity? It's because you know, our vision is that you have, you need AI everywhere. So yes,、uh, AI in the cloud is very important, you know, for large language models, for training, and for inference. But you also need AI at、uh, the edge and also in the client's devices. And you know, AMD has all of this technology: CPUs, GPUs, NPUs, and we're integrating them in、um, across all of these different use cases. So I think that is our opportunity.、Uh, this is、um, the:、uh, you do need great hardware. You also need great software. And our philosophy is to create this open ecosystem. So we had a great day today,、uh, and thank you very much for coming,、uh, okay. because we we have the opportunity to really show everyone when you bring everybody together, you can actually have a better solution with such a rich ecosystem. Great hardware, great software, great partners. Yeah. 
cloud-based AI driven by data center, there, you know, it, that is changing the world right now. And people are already using chat GPTs and other AI services on daily basis. And uh, as you mentioned, you, you know, you've got the on-device AI solution like Ryzen AI. You even added MPU to Ryzen. I think for now, on-device AI is still in its early age. Uh, but in th maybe three to five years, when we truly enter the AI era, what do you think will be the balance between cloud-based AI and on-device AI? You know, it's a great question. Uh, I think we're going to learn a lot over the next few years. But the way I think about it is uh, cloud AI, of course, is foundation. Right? You need to have um, a very, very uh, powerful cloud infrastructure and, and on-prem you know, large enterprise clusters to train large models and uh, to really uh, have uh, particularly for the the more um, you know, broad foundational models. Um, but I think there's also a lot of opportunities for very specialized models. Um, when you think about you know healthcare or financial <laughs> services or content creation or you know local productivity. And in those cases, um, on device AI or what we call um, the client side or edge side uh, with uh, Ryzen AI can be very, very powerful. Um, you know, I view this as, um, as you said, it's the beginning, but the beginning is uh, very exciting as well. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of new devices coming in uh, 2024 with our partners. And I think that people will be able to see their productivity uh, significantly improve if they're using AI PC. And every year it's going to get better. Um, I would say that the functionality will improve and the overall capability will improve. So yeah, it's a, it's a very exciting time for us. And, you know, nowadays AMD's revenue in data center is getting bigger and bigger compared to gaming. And a lot of fans, unfortunately, in my channel are gamers and <laughs> enthusiasts. Uh, you know, although the AI is exciting, many gamers are just a bit worried, like maybe the love is gone or something. They maybe feel like, oh, I spent a lot of money supporting your gaming gears. And now you're, you know, you're falling in love with this AI thing here. What's going on? What about us? Yeah. So <laughs> you can tell all of your uh, all of your fans that uh, gaming is still extremely important yeah. extremely important we're gonna okay. you're gonna see great gaming hardware from AMD and really uh, you know you will see AI also influence gaming uh, going forward so it really is um, you know the way I think about it is uh, you know AI is a technology that can go on top of all of our products uh, but of course we want to keep uh, pushing the envelope for uh, all of the gamers out there on CPUs and GPUs, uh, as well as uh, integrating NPUs when uh, they're helpful. You don't think it's kind of like, uh, you know, the shift of focus happening, but more like, you know, the rapid growing on AI can also help those gamers and enthusiasts, right? Absolutely. That's exactly right. We got a, one last question here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so today there's a lot of teenagers and uh, students in China, and they are really interested in chip designing and manufacturing. They dream of making chips, but they are also wondering like where to get started. Uh, what should I learn to get into the industry? I know you have some serious engineering background, and you've been also you know pursuing your dreams since you were young. Uh, what kind of advice would you give to these young folks, and what kind of skills do you think are essential, uh, maybe for their hopefully future careers? Well, I'm very, very happy to hear that uh, all the teenagers want to build chips because that's great. And uh, I think this is um, really a great time. You know, when I think about the important skills, it's really uh, for uh, you know, those uh, people to really think about um, learning as broad as possible. So, you know, hardware, software, systems, they all interact with each other and being able to uh, really see across all of these areas is, is a very positive thing. But yes, we need more people building chips. So um, I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, my major was electrical engineering and, um, you know, many people say, uh, what is uh, more important, uh, hardware or software? I think my advice is both are important. And also what's very important is a practical experience. So I like the fact that a lot of people build their own PCs. That's a, one example of practical experience. I think as uh, you go forward, the opportunity to learn how to build great products is uh, really the most fun part of uh, engineering. 
Thank you, Lisa, for today, and you know, glad to have you here. Wish you a good trip in China. And ladies and gentlemen, Lisa Su from AMD. Thank you so much.